Hey guys, and how's it going? Just spun around, there was a free mower on the side of the road. Let me go get up on it. We'll go see what we got. I think it's a free mower. It's that, it has that look. <laughs> Let's go see. Looks like a Toro. Actually a decent one. Late 80s, early 90s. Personal pace. Let's go. Let's see what we got. Something on the handlebars. Runs, needs work, free. Got electric start too, keys in it. Nice. Rear bagger. Missing a plastic cover for the front here. Doesn't look terrible. A couple pieces are busted up with plastic, but hey, price is right, right? All right, let's go throw this in the truck. Bring it back to the operating table. See what it takes to resuscitate it. All right, guys, we got up on the bench. Tis the season, springtime. Everybody tries bringing their power equipment out. Generally, they have a hard time <laughs> trying to get it to run or there's some issue with it from sitting over the winter time. Most of the time, it's bad fuel, but you never know. Mice. Or they just want something new or got something new for Christmas. Anyway, we're going to go see what happened to this one, what it needs, if it can be brought back to life. And if not, we're going to go figure out what failed on it that kind of made it go to the curb and not be worth fixing anymore, at least for them. So let's start poking a little bit. Hey, I've done nothing with it. So we're looking at all of it at the same time. She is eh, a little low on it. It's fine. Well, it's fine. Doesn't look terribly dirty. Okay, it does have electric start, which is nice. It's missing. There's a cover that goes here that's gone. When I went to go roll it up on the bench, it has about a bunch of drag on the wheels. I don't know if there's a problem with the automatic drive. Let's go see what we got for... Gas tank is empty. It does not smell terrible, which is good. There's a battery in it. Who knows what kind of condition it's in. That's also missing a cover too. Looks like there was a cover over the top of that. Let's get the bagger off of it. We'll flip it up on its side. Let's go grab that air cleaner real quick. Yeah, that's that's gotten a lot of maintenance, huh? So right there is going to make it run with like it has a choke on. So it's going to make it run rich. Huh. Let me get the bagger off. Should you be able to flip up on that? I should lift right up and out of there. No critters in the basket, just last year's grass. Alright, we want to go flip it. Carburetor side up. This is generally the way you want to do it so you don't fill the carburetor up with oil. I'm looking at the deck. It's got a bunch of busted up plastic. Drive belt is still there. The blade, it's got a bend on it right there. I don't know if that's consistent on both sides. The rest of the chassis doesn't look too bad. I don't see any cracks or busted up areas anywhere on the deck. Let's go lay it back down again. Maybe we'll put a little bit of fuel in it and uh, see how it got left off for running. I'm gonna pop that air cleaner back on too, just so that everything is as it was. So what's your thoughts? You think it's gonna fire right up? You think it's gonna be one of the ones that you Yank on it half a dozen times, a dozen times, 20 times. <laughs> That's usually the ones that get thrown out. Generally, if they're still running, they kind of run them into the ground. So it may be hard starting. Let's go find out. A little more than three, huh? Uh, let's drop it down. And the GTS stands for 
guarantee to start. Let's go find out. How many pulls? Let me see, five. Five or none? <laughs> Three, we need a little chug. Four. There's some kind of white pebble or something starting to come out of it. Some foam or something. Let's give her a couple more, see if she'll go. Want to try the key? <laughs> Just in case? No, not a logic start. I do detect that we have a problem. All right, let's go open her up and start looking into what's going on. I'm gonna suspect the carb is dirty. Let's go pop a plug out of it. See what it looks like and if we got spark. Oh, that's, yeah, there's, <laughs> that is fouled beyond fouled. Look at that sucker. That one's really bad. I haven't seen that one bad in a while. Well, I don't think that's gonna have a spark. That might be an issue. Let's go uh, hook it up and give her a couple of yanks over see what we get. I got a clamp on the handlebar to have the safety on because that, that does kill spark too. And it should be no compression so we might be able to grab the pull start from on top of the... Now we got a, a ground wire on there. I do not see anything, do you? Let me go kill the lights. Yeah, we got nothing. I got a brand new plug in here. Let's see what we got. I am not seeing a thing. All right, so we got no spark. That is what it died for. All right, so what these have is, I call it a dead man. It's this lever right here. And I got it clamped off all the way forward. Generally, when you're running the mower, you pull that down and that allows the engine to run. It takes a brake off of the flywheel, and then also uh, there's a kill for spark down below, also on the flywheel, and the carb thing, it's just all kind of uh, one setup. Anyway, so what happens is, if that cable is not pulled enough, it doesn't come up far enough off of the ground that grounds out the coil for spark. That's a guess on my part. We're gonna go move forward. We could have a bad coil, who knows. Let's get this cover off, get into there a little bit and see if we can find anything. Well, that cover's out of the way. You can see the cable. This is the cable I'm talking about that it pulls on the linkage. And then you see this micro switch here. This is not for spark for the engine. This is for the electric start. And it wants to make sure that the brake is not on when you're trying to crank the starter. Give you an eyeball on it. So that just has a lever to make sure that this micro switch right there, that micro switch gets pushed in and allows the path, the, the DC positive, to go through the switch and allow it to go to the starter. That's all that is. Our linkage is still up inside here that grounds it out. So I'm also gonna go take the pull start cover off. We'll look a little bit deeper in. I should probably just lift that gas tank right out of there now. There we go, we'll let's set to the side. And we have one, two, three, four, five screws to get out of it and that cover should pop off. see what we can see that little green wire is a wire that's gonna ground out this one right here and it is running up it's kind of hard to see it's actually up under the flywheel it looks like this one runs in a difficult place a lot of times it's generally fairly out in the open right here so what we can do just to go see if that is causing the issue for now just unplug it and we'll give it a spin let's go see. And if spark comes back, then we know that that is what our issue is. I'm gonna go set us up with uh, something to go spin there real quick. After one of the other videos of me spinning the flywheel off of the, what was it? It was, it was an antique something or other, the old uh, pump there. A couple of YouTubers or subscribers rather sent me some one-way 
ratcheting sockets. And what that allows is just for it to spin it, but then when it starts up, it doesn't spin the nut off. So we got that one and this one. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate that. Let's go put it to the test and see what we get. Oh, yeah, man. So you got no spark whatsoever. So I think we have a coil, a bad coil on this one. Let me give it one last shot. Yeah, we got nothing. So that was the detective work to see what we have. Let's go see what I have in my stash. That uh, they're physically rubbing. <laughs> right, this is gonna be controversy. I know it is. A lot of people say that rust on here will affect fact of the coil working and not working i so far am in disagreement with that I, I would not think that rust can interfere with a magnetic field so i'm kind of in disagreement the only thing that i could see possibly happening and whether that being an issue is if i wonder if it rubs and it actually makes contact would that stop the process from firing especially the the my guess is maybe the the center post that is on that so we're going to go take a second real quick clean them up See what happens, see what we get. If not, we're gonna to continue to move forward and uh, see what we got going on in the coil. Actually, we're just gonna pop that off anyway because we wanna look and see if there's any cracking or anything inside the plastic. Not quite sure what he meant by runs. Sure, it ran at one time. Yeah, what do we got? So those you see that the coil will have a crack and there's a spider walking on it. Moving day. Yeah, for you to leave. All right, let's go take a little bit. We'll clean up this surface right here. Clean these three up and see if we get anything. I don't see anywhere where it looks like it was making contact. I don't see any rub marks on it. It did sound like it a little bit though. Well, let's see. We'll go clean it up and see what we got. I just have a piece of folded up paper in between making an air gap. It's really not that sensitive. I'm just going to eyeball it again to make sure I'm not touching. Looks pretty good. Let's go give her a spin again. See if it makes me a liar. No spark. I got to put the drill on slow because it's shutting off. There we go. Yep. Nada. That is one dead coil. So you bet you're saying to yourself, where is he going to come up with a coil? Well, the day after I grabbed this one, this happened. It pays to be a hoarder. All three are for free. Or earth. I think we need the Toro. Sometimes it pays to be a junk collector. So this one, we'll give it a quick look. Seems like the pull start is out of whack. The lever, the bar is broke out of the plastic 
Looks like some plastic's broken on there. Yeah, that's not doing anything for the for the drive. It's broken off. It's got the piece of plastic that we need. Let's go flipper on end. Now this, one's been, this one's been sitting outside for a while, as you can tell. Got mold growing on the bag. And it's a couple of plastic pieces that are in much better shape than what we have. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. Let's get that coil off of there and see if it's any good and we'll run the other machine. Yeah, screws are out. Let's see what this has for surprises for us. Ooh, mouse nest. How rusty that one is, huh? Hopefully, that one is still good. Get that out of there and we'll pop it on the machine see how it does. This one may be questionable. It's getting a separation on the plates. Rust gets in between there and it starts pushing them apart. So that may be already on its way out. Let's go hit it with a wire wheel. Blow some of the crap off of it. See if it's any good though. It's separating all the way around. And let's see what the new old one does for us. There we go. Now we got spark. I would say it's great, but we got spark. Plenty, plenty to run. So back on the old machine, this is a plug that was in it. I kind of cleaned it up on a wire. We'll take a look at it. That insulator in the center looks really weird. I'm not used to seeing anything with the that style. It looks like it's for a chainsaw more than it is for a mower. That's my guess. Here's the one that's in there. Let's go pop that one out, take a look at that plug. That's probably more the correct one, be my guess. Maybe we'll clean that one up and throw it in. So there's the two plugs. In focus. You can see the difference on the insulator. See how fat the one is on there, and then the diameter of that one. That's what I was talking about. It's totally different. What's the number on this one? Probably something 12. J19LM to uh, Eco Clean. <laughs> something, something, something number. All right, let's go clean that one up and we'll put that back in it. All right, so a little bit of gas in her. And we'll try that drill setup, see how it works for us. It might even stay running, depending on what that fuel is in that carburetor. If that's the case, I just gotta pull the lever up top because the ground wire is back on again. Here we go. I thought it was going to be fuel. You did too. All right, let's go continue on. See if we can do the rest of it some justice and make it back to a functioning mower again. Well, I think just for shits and giggles, let's um see if that battery. It's using the battery in there. Bust it off the one terminal. Let's go put power to that and see if that part of it works. Don't my jumper pack here, but what I do have is a battery. And two red test leads. <laughs> Alright. Black to red to black. Let's go red to red. That makes sense? Yeah, let's see if we get anything out of it. Plug's disconnected. Kinda. Looks like it's trying to pull down, but. 
give a little dribble of oil on here to get this thing to kind of do one of them. That battery might be low too. I don't have enough snot to get her to go. I lost something. And the compressor's on. Nope, got nothing now. I would guess that battery might be just totally dead. Test light. No, yeah, it's got power. We lost it somewhere. Ah! <laughs> the clamp came off the handlebars. We lost this up here. And that makes and breaks that switch that we we're talking about earlier. In contact. Yeah, who knows what the condition that battery is in. Let's get the plug out of it so there's no restriction. We'll let it spin a little bit. Yeah, I think we just need a better battery. I think it's got enough snot to, to drive it and that's why the starter's not coming down and not cranking over fast enough. All right, here we got a jumper pack hooked to it. Let's see what that does for us. Still not trying to drive down in there. Get rid of this a little bit more. Don't think that's our issue though. There she goes. Well, I think we'll worry about that if we ever worry about actually having an electric start. Dying it, a slow death. The starter was definitely slowing down. The jumper pack's not dead, so. One more shot. <laughs> now it's going down, just won't spin it. Yeah, I think she's uh, not having a good day. That shouldn't be a clutch between the two of those. I don't know if the oil just hurt it. Sure, what the deal is with the rubber plate on top, but now it's oily and it will not drive it. That's cold. and you know cut grass but she's a bit of a dirty girl so let's go give her a bath real quick the pressure washer get rid of some of the crap that's on it and you know, under it and around it is a little you know, easier capacity to do some wrenching on it that's a little cleaner i see we get the oil out of it and i do have drain plugs underneath but i do find it easier especially because we have to do a bunch of work underneath anyway just to flip it Onto the dipstick and let her just do her thing. 
While it's draining, we'll go check out the, the inner set. I'm going to put my finger... There's no plug in it. I'm just going to spin it. Let's rub it on the gas tank. I want to get an idea. I'm going to let it rub against me. It's actually pretty close. I'm surprised. It looked, you know, visually it looked like it was pretty uh, badly bent. We're going to go figure out which blade is the better one. We'll go pop them both off and we'll pick the better of the two between that and the parts machine. Hey. So this is the one off the other machine and the wet one, of course, is the one that we're working with now. I would actually say the blade that is on it is better. You can see how much, and that's usually what happens. The corners will get burned away. You still have some meat left on them. And this is lift. This little lift that you see here, that's a lift. That's what pulls the grass up. Kind of like a vacuum cleaner thing cuts it. I'm just going to go compare it to the... They both look like they have the same bow to them. But I think that's the way that blade is made. Especially the fact that both of them line right up with each other. I don't think that's a, a damage to the blade that I previously thought. So I'm just go clean that one up on a grinder real quick. And uh, we'll inspect what else we got going. I think we got some plastic pieces. If we can get them off the other one in one piece. would be a better replacement like this one right here. Possibly this one. And I'll chop chop on the sander. Just kind of quickly run them over. Give them a decent edge. They, they, they go blunt on the edge fairly quickly most of the work is done right there this is the first thing as the blade is coming around it, it goes and cuts so by the time anything's getting cut into here there's really not much happening as the mower mower is moving forward and this is spinning around this is what's clipping the grass as it approaches underneath the deck so again that's where the most of the work is done right in that very last little edge as long as both of those look decent you're fine. As far as balance is concerned, I've really never had a, uh, a problem with it. You'll know. It'll shake like crazy if there's a balance issue. A lot of guys are you know, giving me heat for that right now, but I, I've never really kind of run into it. More that you run into is that you have a bent shaft in the middle of it and the blade is sitting awkward or uh, cockeyed to one side and causing a shake. Got like mud dripping out of it. I would definitely say that's gotten its use. Yeah, let's go a little part shop and this is the parts mower. Let's see if we can get it. That should be that shield. I'm not quite sure what that whole black plastic piece in the back is uh, gonna take. There, that was easy. So I don't have the blade or anything back on it yet, but there is one problem I would perceive as a problem. Rolls forward, fine. If you try dragging it, dragging it back, backwards, it just locks the back tires up. I believe there's a ratchet inside the gears on the wheels that kind of clog up and gum up over time. Let's go. The wheels got to come off anyway. Let's go look into them, see if we could go fix that part of it while we're disassembling it to just re replace the uh, broken plastics. Before you take that wheel off, just do a quick rundown on how the drive system works. It's got on the handlebars, you push down on the bars themselves. Those bars retract, have a lever that pulls on a cable. That cable runs down to the gearbox and there's a lever on the gearbox with a spring on it. So the more you push down on the handlebars, the more it tilts that gearbox on the axle and that in turn tightens the belt up. That's how the drive system works. And it's just the gearbox going to an axle and then there's a gear reduction inside the wheel. All right, let's get the wheel off. So on the wheel, there's a gear on the back side of it. And then there's a gear right here. Actually, it does not feel terrible. But there's little cogs in there that catch. Go pop it apart anyhow. There's a little C-clip on there. That'll come off. This will come off. And then I believe there's a ratcheting tooth on the inside of it. If not for nothing, at least you'll understand how it works. 
Let me see get that clip off of there. There you go, you can see the little ratcheting chambers that it can fall into. And it's got a, a key that's spring loaded. That's one actually, this one looks like it is okay. Let me get you closer. So that little key is spring loaded and it should tuck out of the way when he wants to roll back the other direction. So you're looking at the gear. As the gear's going around, it's got a cam on it it'll allow it to slip in and go past it but when it wants to go drive it it locks in the other direction and drag, drags the cog and pulls it along with it i'm going to take them apart clean them up oil them that'll come out and again there's a there's a spring back in there but you see the crap that starts to build up on them and they don't get quite out of the way in time it's, it's not a very good design especially you know for something that was in a clean environment fine but on a lot more i'm not the a big of a fan of it seems like every one I find this one might be the exception is usually gummed up to the point where they're not operating we're over on the junk one and you can see that this one can go either way it's really not going to do anything for a drive because it's stuck all the way in over there you can see that the key is just stuck inward it gets so much crap packed around it that it won't go there's one on the good mower, put back together, cleaned and oiled. Like a fine tuned watch. Or break it into a safe. I flipped over, taking the hardware out for the changing of the plastics. And you can see how that one's fighting it. Got a little cog in there. That one's dirty. Great example. Before. And after. <laughs> Get the gear off that side. Let's go see how packed in this one is. Like I said, that, that should be when it's in there. That should be bouncing up and down. It's a joke there somewhere. Sometimes the springs break too and they'll, they'll collapse. But generally you just get so much mud packed up in them. Trying not to destroy the spring, getting it out, you know. So it just gets so. There it is. You can see that spring is just nothing but solid. Solid poop. And then you start digging, and all the crap that starts coming out of there. But the mower is probably at least 20 years old. I guess so there's that also <laughs> it's been around a, a little while it's not like something you would maintain easily it's not like you can just okay I'll put a couple drops of oil on it it'll be fine the oil kind of attracts debris really but all right you get the idea that's more like it springy and you want to they got letters on left and right just paces outward and that's so much more nice then on in our little spring clip yeah kind of go back and forth whether lube helps it helps in the short term but then again it also kind of attracts debris so my judgment is out on that when in doubt Go with lube. All right, that's on. Our plastics are all put back 
in place. I gotta just flip it over and tighten the screws down for that one. We're gonna throw that original blade back on there that is sharpened and we'll get her back on the shiny side, shall we? And another piece from the other machine. Cover up a hole. Another thing I see common on mowers that make them cut real crappy and people throw them out, they just get aggravated with them, they're not getting a good cut. All right, see where the deck height is set on this? Each wheel is individual. And you got basically five settings. It's, it's every you can, there that will drop in between there. So it's one, two, three, four, whatever, six. See where that one is? It's roughly right in the middle, between all the way up and all the way down. Look at the front one. It only has one click to go before it is all the way in the down position. Same with the one on the other side. It's in the same setup. And then the back. Let's go see what the third one is. Sometimes it's even off from left or right. Yeah, that one is in the middle. So I'm gonna probably set them in the middle all the way around, but you can see how the deck is leaning on an angle, like it's an old hot rod. As one goes by. <laughs> so that's gonna make a weird cut to the grass too, because the blade is pitched down like this. So the center of the blade gets a good cut, but as it gets over here, it's actually getting higher up in the air. So it makes the grass that kind of set up. And sometimes too, you'll see where it's from side to side, it's off. You go to cut the grass, you, you go one direction, you go back the other direction, the, diff the height between this side and this side leaves, you know, three quarters of an inch or so difference between the two of them and it gives just a poor cut for the lawn. So this one's no exception with its, uh, its hot rod leaning forward. Quick look at the junk mower. We are second tab up and we are second and a half tab up in the back. So even this one's not correct. All right, although it did run decent, I do want to pull the float bowl off. If we find it's really dirty, we'll pull that carb off and clean it. But for now, we can access the float bowl, we'll pull the nut, drop the bowl, look at the main jet in the center. If there's a bunch of crap, we'll make our decision from there. Sometimes I like to get a, gla a glass under it so you can kind of see what comes out. So I can get my finger over it real quick. I'm trying to maintain the fuel that's in it, if it'll come off. Yeah, it's got water in it. Let's see if we can get you. It's got dirt in it. There's a puddle. If you, if you see in the bottom, it moving around, it's like a, a slightly different color. That is all water. And that generally will not come out of there because the jet is so fine, it'll be hard to pick it up. But the bowl is really clean, so I'm not going to be that concerned about it. We're going to go clean that up. We're going to go clean this jet up. This is where all the fuel gets drawn up through. So we're going to make sure that that is clean and those ports are clean. I just put that right back together. That bowl's back on. The air cleaner. I do not have another one. We're going to go blow that out with air and do our best to get the crap out of it. Sometimes these get oil soaked, especially if somebody pitches it up on the carburetor side. And that's possibly what this is, or it could be just water. Again, the system is not that great. I'm not that fond of these air filters because of the fact that if they're let out in the rain, water gets down inside here and it's just a paper filter and it's, it sucks them up. So go hit that one air gun outside, huh? Ew. Definitely far from perfect, but it will work. That is backwards. Fortunately, you can't flip it over because the, the hole for the filter is offset. You take the cartridge and rotate it, you know? But it'll work. All right, I think we're ready to go just put the pull start on. We're almost to that point. Good. Although I put gas in it, I'm still gonna run it out of this tank. Make sure there's no water in it. Something just came out of there. What was that, a penny? <laughs> that looks like a cap for maybe a, a gas can. Wonder when that fell in there. Yeah, a little bit of dirt, not terrible though. And again, I'm just gonna let it settle to the bottom and we'll see if any water puddles up down below. I do not see anything right away. Sometimes you look at the fuel, the fuel will be cloudy looking. This isn't right now, but if it's cloudy looking, you let it sit for 10 minutes and then on the bottom of it, the water will appear. I'm gonna go blow that out with some compressed air. We'll go 
pop that back on there and we're ready to roll and in keeping with the free theme on this one this oil was yard sale oil meaning what they do is when people are especially when they're moving they're getting rid of everything they go in the garage and they take all the chemicals and they, they throw them and turn like milk crates and they put them out and make a free pile out in front and i come along and then grab them for stuff like this or sometimes if you're going to go flush an engine out and to get rid of it real quick but this was actually a full jug Having said that, I did pay for the gas up. I'm confident. Yeah. All right, how many pulls are you giving it? That's three pumps. Do what it says. <laughs> and I say third pull. I would call that a success from the trash to treasure i think we could peel off our sticker self-propel works unfortunately there's no grass outside to cut it actually snowed yesterday i was kind of hoping the snow was going to stay there for a goof i was going to go try cutting snow but it disappeared so that's kind of a before and after huh <laughs> well Guys, I think that's it. We were able to save one out of the two junkers that we had and uh, really put no money into it whatsoever other than fuel. Everything else was uh, pieces from the other machine. It could, you know, you could put a new plug in it, uh, a belt, the uh, blade if you wanted to, air cleaner, but it's, everything's functional the way it is. It'll cut grass for a couple of seasons just like it is. And uh, it turned out quite well. I, I don't have any grass to go cut yet. It's too early in the season, but I'm going to keep it at my house. I'll run it for a little bit. I kind of do that with all of them. Just kind of run through the paces, make sure there's no issues with them. And then I'll kick it to the curb. It's probably worth hundred bucks around here, 100, 120 maybe. The other one, we'll steal some parts off of it and the, the carcass will go in purgatory, which is my dump trailer. And so, <laughs> I call it purgatory because until it gets dumped, I go back there and I pick pieces off of it for uh, the future. But for now, I think it's definitely served its purpose as far as uh, getting all the busted pieces from that one onto this one and making us a good machine. So I'm happy with that. I think that's turned out quite well. And uh, I don't have a battery. I'm not going to put a battery in it. If it, somebody wants to have the electric start work, they can go chase that. The other problem with it is it's missing the plug. It's got a little plug, a little DC transformer that plugs in a wall that back charges the battery. It doesn't have a charging system to recharge that. But it starts easy, apparently. It starts on one pull. <laughs> all right, guys. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me, having a little bit of fun, doing some wrenching, and uh, working on the cheap. We'll do it again soon. Until that time, I'll see you.